Hi guys, um, Terry here again, right? Um, I'm going to be working question five in the January 2022 paper, right? Um, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and also hit like, right? So we're moving on to question five, right? Okay, so in question five here, they said they give us a cumulative frequency diagram and it shows the information about the distance each that each of 120 students walk to school on a particular D, right? So they give us a, a, a graph here and let's see what they want from the graph. First part, they want us to find out how many students walk at most, right? One kilometer to school on that day. So this is at most, right? So that is, that's at most, right? So what we can do, let me give you, hold on. Let's go to the graph, right? So at most, we're looking at here. Um, so at most, one kilometer. So you're going to go to your graph, right? And what you guys is going to have to do is to draw a line, right? At the one kilometer mark, which is around here. Right? So in the exam, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to draw a line at the one kilometer mark and you're going to read this off here. Alright, now I don't have a, a great copy of this paper here, but um, we can read this value off here. Right? Now, make sure you understand how to read your scale. This is 30 here and that's 40. So therefore, that's 32, 34, 36. Right? So 36 is going to be the answer for this one here, right? So 36 students, right, um, walked a distance of less than um, one kilometer, right? So that's at most we're talking about here. The next part, part B, they want you to use the diagram to determine an estimate of the median, right? Now, if you want to get median, now just to recap something here right now I have several videos concerning this right so when you have a cumulative frequency curve right the curve has a shape some like this right so this here is cumulative frequency and this here is whatever variable we are using in this case is distance now what we do right you can use a cumulative frequency curve to determine your median so let's say this is my total number here, right? If this here is n over two, right? As the middle of our data, this value here is what we call our Q2. That's our median, right? If you read off a quarter of your data, that's n over four, and we come down here, that's gonna give us Q1, which is our lower quartile. If you want to get the upper quartile, we're going to do this. So this here is 3n over 4. And when we come here, that's going to give me my upper quartile, right? So that's generally speaking here when it comes to a cumulative frequency curve. So they ask us for the median. So all I need to do is to go to my graph, right? And I'm going to read off where is my middle. So you're going to draw a line. So you have 120 students in total. So what you're going to do, you're going to draw a line by the 60, right? That's half the data. And then we're going to read that off, right? Now, when I read it, read this off of my graph here, I am getting, and we need to make sure we can read these diagrams, eh? read the scale on the diagrams. So according to mine here, let's make sure we understand the scale. Um, Hold on. That's 0 0.5, right? So therefore, every two lines, so that's 0 0.1, that's 0 0.2, that's 0 0.3, that's 0 0.4, right? So every two lines represents 0 0.1. So this reading here that I'm getting, so this is 1.1, 1.2, that is 1.3 kilometers, right? So that's 1.3 kilometers as my median. right 1.3 kilometers 
The next thing we want, we want our lower quartile. To get the lower quartile, right? Remember, we have to look at a quarter of our data. So if you have 120, right? We need to read off a quarter of my total data, which is a quarter multiplied by 120. And that's going to give you 30. So we need to read off at 30 in order to get our lower quartile. So again, use a ruler and you're going to read off at 30. All right? And what you're looking for, you're trying to see where is that cut in your graph. So based on what I have here, now these construction lines, you have to do this in the exam. Eh? You have to draw these lines in the exam to actually get these answers. All right. Let me see something here. So my lower quartile, that reading there looks like, so this is 0.5, this is 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So that's about 0 0.9. So I'm getting my lower quartile as 0 0.9 kilometers. So this here is 0 0.9 kilometers, right? Next thing we want to find is the interquartile range. But here's the thing. Interquartile range, right, is simply my upper quartile minus my lower quartile. But all we know so far, we worked out Q1, right, which is a lower quartile. So we need to figure out what Q3 is first. That's your upper quartile. Now to get your upper quartile, that is three quarter of your total amount of data that we have, so that is three quarter multiplied by 120 and that's going to give me 90. So what I need to do is go to the graph and I need to read off where is 90, right? So 90 is going to be about here, right? And then I'm going to have to draw a line at that point here. Right, and based on that measurement there, that's 1.5. Here is, sorry, here's 1.6. So that's 1.55. So I'm getting my upper quartile as 1.55 kilometers. Right, so therefore, if you want to work out the interquartile range, it'll be 1.55, that's your upper quartile, minus your lower quartile, which is 0.9. And that's going to give you, so 1.55 minus 0 0.9. 1.55 minus 0 0.9. And you're going to get 0 0.65. 0 0.65 kilometers. All right, so that's what I'm getting as my interquartile range. Now part C now, they said a student is chosen at random. What is the probability that they walk more than? So you notice they put this in bold, because that's a little trick in the question. So more than 1.5. So you go back to your graph again. We have to take our next measurement here. So we need to see where is um, 1.5. So 1.5 is here, right? And that is about looks like about 82 right so it really depends this graph is not the best graph but my reading that I'm getting here is about 82 students right so basically you got 82 students but you want more than right so from the graph we got 82 so what you're gonna have to do now you're gonna have to say 120 minus 82 right that'll give you the amount of students who um, work more than the 1.5 um, right so that's 120 minus 82. And you're going to get 38. So I'm getting 38 students. Right? So therefore, the probability that they want here is going to be 38 over 120. That's my probability. Right? So you have to be careful when you're trying to work out more than. Right? So. So that's the answer for that part of the question. Now, the last part of the question, they gave us a table. 
right? Um, so basically working backwards now. They said complete the table below and use the information to calculate an estimate of the mean. Now, if you notice something here, we're missing some data in the table, right? You're missing some data, right? So first things first, we have midpoint, right? So that's easy to find. What we're going to do, we're going to add 1.5 and 2 and just divide that by 2. So 1.5 plus 2 divided by 2 and you're going to get 1.75. So this here is going to be 1.75. So that needs to be in the table. Now the hardest part for you guys now is to work this fellow out here. What is the missing data? Now you're working backwards here in this diagram, right? So let's look at this cumulative frequency um, table here, right? Now from, from the graph, you can get what your cumulative frequency is, right? And what they did in this table here, they gave us our boundaries, you know. This is my boundary, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, 2. So they've given us all, all the boundaries. So what we can do is to read these things off from the graph. So the first one, 0.5, I'm just going to read that off here. So if this is 10, that should be 12. So my cumulative frequency from the graph is 12. The next thing here, you're going to read off at 1. Right? So that corresponds. So this is 30 here. So that's corresponding to 36. That's my cumulative frequency. 1.5 is corresponding to about that's 82. 2.0 is corresponding to about what is that there 110 maybe 112 2.5 now is corresponding to about as 110 that is 116 and then 3.0 is our last figure which always works out to the total number so this is 120 here so this information is being um, being gained from the the graph itself so what I can do now, I can figure out what the actual frequency is supposed to be. So this first frequency is going to be exactly 12, right? To get the next frequency, all I need to do is to take this 36 and subtract this 12 here, right? So you're going to take 36 and you're going to subtract the 12, right? Right, so 36 minus 12 is going to give me um, 24, right? So I know the frequency there. If I want to get this frequency here, I need to take 82 and I need to subtract 36, right? 82 minus 36, and that's going to give me 46, right? To get the next frequency, 112 minus 82, and that's going to give me 30. Then for the next one is 116 minus 12, right? Um, that's not 2.5. Oh, sorry. This is this should have been 118 here, right? I read this incorrectly. This should have been 118. So 118 minus 112 is going to give you um, six, and then 118 minus 120 minus 118 will give me two. So this is what my actual frequency is going to look like, right? So this is so this is my missing information here. Let's go to this table here. So you have 12, 24, 46. So look, 12, 24, 46. So this here will be my two missing frequencies, 30 and 36. So this here will be 30 and this here will be 36. Now, remember they want us to work out Fx. So all you're doing is taking this column and multiplying by this column here. So I'm going to work out 1.75 multiplied by 30. And I'm going to get 52.5. So this here is going to be 52.5. And then the I'm going to take 2.25 by 36. And I'm going to get 81. So this here is going to be 81. Oh, wait, it's hold on. Something not looking right here. Give me a sec. I don't think this is 36. This should be 6. Yeah. Okay, so 
Hold on. This should be 6, right? That should be 6. So it's going to be 2.25 by 6. And that's going to give me 13.5. So here is 13.5, right? Now, to find mean, so mean x bar is given by sigma x f, that is sum of this column divided by the sum of your frequency, right? So what we should do, we should work out the sum. So let's add the frequency. When you add up the frequency, you should get 120. We know that. Let's add up the fx column now. So let's see. So that's 3.0 plus 18 plus 57.5 plus 52.5 plus 13.5 plus 5.5 and I'm getting 150 so this here is working out to 150 so therefore my mean is going to be 150 divided by 120 and that's going to give me 1.25 right so my mean is 1.25 25 kilometers that is my mean all right so that brings us the end brings us to the end of question five like i said if you like my work just um subscribe to my channel and hit like thanks guys